So I ran down to Home Depot to grab some decorative trim. What we want to do is cover the frame of the TV. Your key to this is to turn all your miter saws to 45 degrees. That's going to be every cut that you make. Start with your first cut right on the end at 45 degrees, and then you're going to measure right from the inside cut all the way down the length of the TV. That's where your next miter cut is going to be. Turn the saw to the other way and give it another 45 degree cut. Once you get that cut, you're going to go ahead and match it to the next part. That way you don't have to use a tape measure and you can get the top and bottom frame the exact same size. Just use a pen to mark it out and cut it. Once you get all four pieces cut, lay it out, make sure it's all smooth and ready to go. But the secret to this is you got to have glue. That's going to hold all the pieces together. Now, just don't lay out a bead. You want to smooth it out so it has as much adhesion as possible. The glue is laid out. Just go ahead and put it right up next to it and make sure you get those nice smooth lines. Next, you got to get some flat corner braces. That's what's going to hold these frames together. Just mark out the holes, but you got to be careful. We need to pre-drill all the holes. That way the screws hold inside this MDF wood as easy as possible. Once you pre-drill, the screws go in without a drill. You can just use a regular old screwdriver to put them in. Make sure you get it nice and tight, but don't over tighten. We just want to make sure it's snug and it's holding in place. These corner braces do a great job holding it together. Once you get all four sides, we got to build a box. That way we can cover the sides of the TV. I use a little bit of one by four. And again, you got to use that glue. It holds the sides together. Again, we're going to use 45 degree cuts and look how smooth that is. You can use screws or nails, but I go ahead and use a brad nailer. It's real easy to use and it puts a nice fine fastener right inside. I just use three on the side and it gives it a nice smooth look. Now, Again, we're going to go with the glue. we got to put it all the way around the box frame we just built because we're going to lay the frame on top. If you measured right and did good and took your time, it's going to fit just right. The last thing you need to do on this is use the brad nailer again and put just a few brad nails to hold it together. Once you get those in, let's cover up them nail holes with a little bit of spackle. Just let that dry and sand it clean. Now it's time for some gold paint. Any type will work, but as you can see, it's going to take a couple of coats. I did put three coats on here. Let them dry about half an hour in between coats. The next thing we got to do is we got to put a little bit of Velcro on the TV. That's going to hold the frame in place once we install it. It just looks amazing. When you're not watching TV, you've got your own portrait. I hope this inspired you to build your own DIY television frame. I just got our family portrait in and I want to build a floating frame for it. I wanted miter cuts on my frame. You can make yours flat if you want, but the way I measured was I went ahead and measured the length of the frame, got to 32 inches, and I added 1 8 inch for the width of each corner brace. So that's a total of a quarter. I would measure and cut my length on my miter at 32 and a quarter inches. And then when I measured the height of the picture, it was 16 inches. Again, measure for the corner braces, add another quarter inch. So that frame would be 16 and a quarter inches. Got my mitered cuts right here. And I'm gonna join those together and take the first corner brace and we're gonna set it at the bottom of the two pieces right here. Then what we're gonna do is mark these four holes right here. The reason we wanna put it at the bottom is because when our canvas frame goes in here, you won't see them. So go ahead and mark these, and we're gonna do that on all four corners here. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a drill with the small drill bit and do a small pre-drill. That's gonna help our screws go in. Again, we're gonna do this on all four corners. So what I'm gonna do is turn one of the frames right side up. It makes it easier than having to put the screw in while it's laying on its side. So remember, we did those starter holes and what that's gonna do is allow us to put these screws in. We're gonna put all of them in on each corner and tighten them down. Now make sure when you get your boards 
that the screws and the corner braces do not penetrate or go through the whole thing. The last thing we want is to have any screw showing. That's the whole genius of a floating frame is you don't have to worry about seeing any screws, staples, nails, or anything like that. It just absolutely looks beautiful when it's done. Now that I've got the brace on the bottom, I'm gonna go ahead and get this started right here. And that's gonna hold it together. Again, I always start on the inside ones, that makes it easier. And look at that miter joint right there. It looks so good. So, put this last screw on, join me as I stain. So now that I've got all of the frame put together, I want to put this light stain on it. And I love this stain. It just goes on so nice. Put it all the way around. Look at it blend really good. On this, I use poplar wood. Better than pine because poplar, when you buy it, has, it's usually very dry, and it also allows you to get very straight boards. I'm gonna let this dry, and we'll be right back. Now that the stain is all dried, we're gonna put some wood joiners on here. We're gonna put four of them, one at each corner. And what that's gonna allow us to do is when we go ahead and put one end of the canvas in at one side and switch over here and put it in on the other side, it's going to help us make it flush. So now we'll just hammer them down flush with the frame and we will almost be done. And here is the end result. I love this floating frame look. And I'm probably a little biased, but that's a pretty good looking family up there. For today's project, I wanted to surprise my wife and get rid of this boring bathroom. I didn't want to go with a traditional curtain rod, so I wanted to go something different. Measured the window, grabbed a 1x6 piece of board that was 4 foot long, and started doing a little bit of sanding to it. Next step was to go ahead and put some stain on it. A lot of people use a brush when they do staining. I like to take a towel or a rag and just wipe it on there. Take all the dark spots and get it wiped on. Do every single side of the board. The next step was to put the hardware on the board that would hold it against the wall. Wanted to make sure that the board would be flat and not sticking out like normal hooks or hardware. So this hardware right here, you go ahead and mark it on the back of the board and what we're going to do is drill it out. That allows the screws in the walls to go flat inside the board and it holds it up steady. Once you get it drilled, go ahead and get rid of the sawdust and go ahead and install the hardware using the screw that comes with it. All it takes on a board like this is to put two at each end. Now, you wanna see a good way on how to hang this up and make it level every time? Take a level, put a piece of tape across the top, lay it flat right where your hooks are, and then what you're gonna do is measure and mark right at each hook. Once you do that, go ahead and take the level and set it aside and we'll use it a little bit later. Next, we need to put our hooks up. Now, I went ahead with the black decorative hook and I measure and mark equal distance between each hook by dividing the board. These marks right here are where you're gonna put the hooks and we wanna make sure that we pre-drill each one of these holes. I'm a big fan of pre-drilling. It keeps the boards from splitting. So, once you get those first holes pre-drilled, go ahead and put the hook up use the screws provided because they're the same color as the hook and go ahead and put it on you're going to do this with each and every hole and usually these hooks have two screws make sure you get both of these in now remember that level that we had put that up against the wall and mark where you marked on the tape then you're going to go ahead and put screws in the wall in those two sections this is different though you don't want the screw going flush against the wall make sure it sticks out a little bit then take the board and you're gonna slip it inside the drill hole that you did right inside the hardware. The amazing thing about this is you're not gonna see any screws that go through the board. And look how tight and secure that is. Check one more time for level. The next step is to grab some clip rings. That way there is no sewing or anything. It just clips right onto the curtain. Clip it on, both of them, depending on how you want it, and just hang it over your hook. Now, I went from boring bathroom to curtains that I put up, and then the last step is to go ahead and decorate the rest of the bathroom. Doesn't that look amazing? This took no time at all and it was easy to do.